Good morning, everybody. Welcome on this lovely Wednesday before Christmas to another live crochet along here at the Jada and Stitches show. I would like to begin today's live stream by welcoming you all and thanking Lynette and Susan for your very generous super chats. Thank you both so much. And to Nico and Caroline, a couple of gifting ninjas. Thank you both for swooping in and gifting a membership. And welcome back, Yeltz and Janice, to the family. Congratulations for winning. My gosh, it has been quite a couple of weeks. I, we are really racking up the, uh, the live crochet along hours here. <laughs> So I hope you've all been enjoying yourselves, um, if for nothing else than to sit and have some company as we uh, get busy and make some cute stuff in preparation for the holidays. Uh, we are going to dive back into the cotton yarn stash today. I was having a chat with Mom and Stitches last night and she, uh, we were talking about sort of the, the short list of projects to kind of complete before the holidays begin. And she requested another hot pad so a hot pad a double thickness hot pad we have a tutorial for a classic um, hot pad it's a, what, what we call the double thickness or the double the double hot pad it's a round hanging hot pad it is made out of cotton it is nine inches across and i'm going to make one today out of christmas colors so this is a very easy project. There is no sewing. You actually make both sides at the same time. You kind of like make the front and then you make the back. Um, it's a great thing that you can use up your scrap, your, like cotton yarn for. And it's one of those things that you might want to bring with you if you're going to a potluck. So I've found in the past that one of the things that we run out of um, maybe the quickest uh, other than, than counter space is hot pads or something to put your hot uh, casserole dishes on, your platters on, maybe something on the tables to sort of stop the tables from getting scratched if um, they don't have like a, a, a padded underbelly to a tablecloth or if it's just a bare table. So um, we're gonna make one of those today. And I thought in order to make it really Christmassy, once we finish it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stripe it. I'm just using up some of my leftover um, Christmassy cotton colors. I've even got some nice peppermint color here. Uh, size four, medium weight cotton, the huge. Um, I'm going to stitch a star into the center of it because I think that not only will this add just a little bit extra padding, but I think I kind of like the idea of adding a star into the center of the circle. So that is the plan today. Uh, and before I get into the materials, I'd like to say hello to my sweetie on the controls. Hello, sweetie. <laughs> How is the wife this morning? The wife is uh, caffeinated. She is... Um, warmed up and ready to go. I hope everybody else is too. This is, um, are you going to tell us about your little, uh, your little cute sheep? Oh, my little sheep. Yes. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, about this little guy. Um, I, I saw something on Pinterest a while ago. They were like little wreaths that were made to look like animals. Um, I think they were kind of made with, you know, like those little wooden, wooden cutouts you can get. It was like a wreath with a wooden cutout. They were made to look like little animals. Anyway, I just kind of played around with one and I thought it, this looked cute. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, I was thinking, you know, like for all of your, all of our woolly friends who just like knitting and crocheting and looming and anybody who just loves yarn, I just thought this would make such a cute little like present topper or a little like sort of goofy little ornament, this little sheepy ornament. Anyway, I just kind of made that up this morning and um, I, I still had it sort of sitting on the table here when I was getting everything uh, uh, started. So I don't know if you guys like that, maybe we'll we'll do him this week too because um, it's super fast. I think like it will take you all of, I don't know, 20 minutes maybe to make one of these depending on, on how comfortable you are working with bulky weight yarn. but. Um, I don't know. I just, it's, I just think it's, it's just so silly cute, silly cute, you know? <laughs> anyway, that's, that's the story behind that little guy. He's just keeping me company today on the craft table while I get to work. Um, we've done a couple of other, um, sort of cotton projects so far this, uh, this, I guess this month, <clears throat> we made a soap saver scrubby and we made a kind of a Christmassy version to that. So that was a live cow live crochet along a little while ago and we added just a little sort of extra bit of scrubbing power with a little applique and then we also made um a 
dishcloth with the Fair Isle style evergreen tree that we had. So I've got a little bit of these colors left over and I realized I've got sort of a kind of a theme happening here. <laughs> so I, I thought I would just add to it. I thought this might be a neat set. You know, you've got like your, your tree dish dish club dish cloth you've got like a little soap saver scrubby and then like a little hot pad to go with it and um you could also use the evergreen like the, the granny christmas tree tutorial that we have for the center if you didn't want to use the star but i had this made already and i decided i wanted to use it so that's what i'm going to put in the center of my uh, hot pad today and i'm going to show you when a good time to add an applique to it is um, if you're going to add appliques to your hot pad do make sure you include them in the same uh, fiber. I'm using cotton. Cotton is heat resistant. It is cold resistant. It washes easily. It won't shrink in the washing machine. You can also use wool, but you have to be careful when you wash them because wool wants to shrink. It also wants to felt. Um, so cotton is my recommendation for this project. Size 4, medium weight, the usual hard work and stuff. That's what I've got on the table. Um, I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook, also known as an I or a 9. Um, I've got a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and my stitch marker. And I'm ready to get going. So I'm going to start uh, with my peppermint color. I've got sort of, I, I'm sort of thinking as I go here, I want this to be in the middle and I kind of want it to, to sit um, kind of almost backlit. Like I was thinking about starting with white. Maybe I will start with the white. And I was going to just do the center white and then have this on it and then have the, have the green kind of around it. That's sort of what I'm thinking. So I think I'm going to start with I'm going to start with the white yarn, then I'll move to green, and then I will start alternating. If I have any white left, I'll start alternating back and forth between white and red and my little candy stripe here. So I'm going to put these guys off to the side. I'm going to start with my white. Everything can just sort of sit up here out of my way. And let's get into it. How is everybody today? I can't believe it's Wednesday. Today's the 20th of December. Is anyone else freaking out? I feel like, I feel like, I don't know. I just feel like that shouldn't be the case already. <laughs> we need a poll. Are you freaking out? Yeah, are you freaking out? Yes, no. All right, we are going to start our double-sided no sewing required unless you're adding an applique. Actually, I have another idea for the applique that doesn't include sewing today. So uh, no sewing for today's project. I'm actually going to stitch this on. I'll show you that when I get to it too. We are going to start at the very center of the front of our hot pad. We're gonna build it out. We're gonna add a little hanger and then we're gonna build it back in again. So here we go. We are starting with a cinch circle. If the cinch circle gives you trouble, you can chain four and join with a slip stitch to make a chained ring that is perfectly all right for this project. We are using the double crochet stitch mostly throughout. So I'm going to chain an additional two to that chain that I secured my cinch circle with. Like I said, you can make a chained ring of four if you find that more comfortable. The chain three counts as a, a does not count as a double crochet, so I should say. So the chain three doesn't count as a double crochet in any row in this pattern because we want our circles to be nice and solid. So it's just used to get us up to the right height of a double crochet. So into that circle, we're going to work eight double crochet stitches. And um, the uh, original tutorial is linked below. So if you need to um, get a quick refresher, that will be below and available for you. I went back um, this morning and I was able to add the chapters to yesterday's Angel Candy Cane Holder live stream. Um, so if you are working on the pattern or if you're working on the Angel project from yesterday, um, feel free to pop over to that web, to that video now. I've got chapters in it. So if there's a specific spot you're looking at, you'll see them all kind of lined up. Um, if you mouse over the video player, you'll see the little red line is sort of um, uh, staggered with little uh, breaks in the line and if you wand over that or if you mouse or finger over that you'll see the little uh, chapters are all titled like side one head, hair, side two, stuff like that. So I'm just gonna have a sip of my water here. <clears throat> so besides the chain three we want one, two, three, four, five, six, eight double crochet into that cinch circle or the chained ring whichever you're using. 
the chain three at the beginning of the row does not count as a double crochet. So it's just there to kind of get us up to the right height. Cinch that circle shut. Once you've got your eight double crochet, skip your chain three. You're going to look for the first double crochet stitch and join with a slip stitch to the top of the real double crochet that began the row. So that basically shoves the chain three to the back and gives you a nice solid circle that doesn't have any um, any breaks in it. Um, so there's no there's no like funny seam, there's no gaps, so it's just a nice solid circle. Um, I'm going to work over top of my short tail. Um, yeah, I'm going to work over top of my short tail. All right, we're going to chain three to begin. Chain three doesn't count as a double crochet, but we are going to double crochet into the same place that we double crocheted out of. And we're going to work two double crochet into each stitch all the way around. And I'm just going to hook up my little short tail and work over top of it. So two double crochet all the way around. We're going to go from eight to 16 stitches. Uh, and we're going to do that little false stitch trick. So when you get around to the beginning, we are going to make that little chain three disappear. Alright, when you get back to the beginning, there's your chain three that began and the double crochet that was in the same spot. And you've got this stitch right here that looks like a full on stitch. It's actually what they call the false stitch. If you count them up, if you included your chain three, you'd have 16 double crochet. But we don't want to use the, the chain three. So we're going to just double crochet into that false stitch, but only once. And then we're going to skip the chain three and slip stitch to join in the top of the first real double crochet. Now, if your circle wants to ripple a little bit, um, I recommend sort of placing it flat on your work surface after every single row and just sort of flattening it out. Um, if it ripples a little bit, it's okay. With use, with a wash, it will flatten out. And a little bit tighter is always kind of preferable when you're raking something like a dishcloth or a hot pad because You'd rather start with your stitches tight and have them loosen a little bit than start with your stitches loose and have them loosen even more because obviously this is supposed to protect um, surfaces from heat or wetness or something like that. So err on the side of tight. In the original uh, tutorial, we fasten off here to change colors. If you want to fasten off and change colors, snip your yarn, fasten off and join your yarn with a slip stitch and a chain three right where you fastened off. Now I'm not changing colors yet, but I will show you that in a moment. You can change colors or not change colors at any time throughout this project. So if you want to make the whole thing in one solid color, you can do that. You just basically keep joining everywhere with a slip stitch, chain three to begin. Your chain three never counts. You always skip it when you join your row, when you get all the way back around. If you want to change colors, you just fasten off, Join your yarn with a slip stitch and chain three, really anywhere, but I usually like to do it right where I fastened off just to kind of keep track. And then you just continue with the pattern. So it's not a big deal. I will change my colors in a minute, but not quite yet. Cause I want to have a big enough circle that this kind of sits on top of it, but still has some white all the way around it. I think I have enough, we'll see. Um, okay, <clears throat> I am gonna get some slack on the yarn I have a pull here. coming your way. Okay. Are you ready? I guess I am. I'll have a sip of water. Surprise pull for Jada. Surprise pull. Would you like to see a tutorial on the new she ornaments? <laughs> yes, please do a live stream. Yes, please do a regular tutorial. No, thanks. <laughs> Eight. So yes, please for the live stream. Yes, please for the regular tutorial. Well, you know what? It's so quick. I might be able to do a little mini tutorial 
and a live stream. So if you guys want to sort of see it in a more condensed uh, fashion, I might be able to put one of those together for you too. Might be a good idea too, since um, the little head is is uh, small. It's not small work. It's not even that difficult. But um, all right, guys. Yeah, we will <laughs> we will do that. I I mean, come on. This is so silly. It's so cute. Um, <laughs> I'd like to see a bunch in different colors too. All right, where was I? At the end of row two, we've got 16 double crochet all the way around. I'm not changing colors yet. So to begin row three, we're going to chain three. The chain three does not count as a double crochet. We are going to double crochet into the same place that we just chained three out of. If you want, you can start marking your chain three just to sort of keep an eye on where it is. We're going to double crochet once into the next stitch. And now we're going to start a little repeat. We're going to work two double crochet into the next stitch. and a double crochet into the stitch after that. So the little pattern all the way around is two, one, two, one, two, one. And you're gonna repeat that until you get back to the little false stitch that sits at the end. So remember, just before you get to the end, you'll be working two double crochet into the second last stitch, double crochet into the last stitch. There'll be one stitch left, and that we're just gonna double crochet once into that because it's sort of the, the way we close the circle to make it look like there's no seam. So two double crochet, one double crochet, two double crochet, one double crochet. We're making eight full increases in each row for quite a while. This is how we're expanding our little circle. And we will be going from 16 to 24 double crochet at the end of row three. Welcome, welcome, if you're all just arriving. We are making a Christmassy hot pad today, an actual trivet. So if you need something to rest the extra pot, pan, platter, uh, casserole dish, whatever you might have, especially if you're going to a, uh, um, a potluck, this is a good little thing to have with you. You can even leave it as a little, a little hostess gift. It's also a nice way to use up some of those cotton scraps, especially the stuff that's got the, the Christmassy colors. So I'm working my last little increase, two double crochet into the second last stitch, double crochet into the last stitch, and that brings me up to the false stitch that's this guy right here. The chain three comes out of it. I'm gonna double crochet into that stitch because I don't count my chain three. So I'm gonna skip over top of my chain three and join to the top of the first real double crochet we made, slip stitch to join and lay it flat just to flatten it out. Hello, Crocus, thank you. Crocus has just gifted a membership. We've got a third flying gift ninja in the chat today. <laughs> thank you so much. And Allie has won it. Welcome back, Allie, congratulations. So that's three rows so far. I need to keep going for a little while longer. I'll see how long my white holds out. Again, if you wanna change colors, just fasten off at this point and then rejoin your yarn with a slip stitch in the same stitch that we're currently sitting in and chain three. Row four begins with a chain three. The chain three will not count as a double crochet. Eventually, we're gonna double crochet into the same place. And then we're gonna double crochet into each of the next two stitches. So the new increase pattern for row four is two double crochet, one double crochet, one double crochet, two double crochet, one double crochet, one double crochet. We do that all the way around. That'll bring you up to the false stitch, this guy right here, which we will put one single double crochet into because we are skipping the chain three. And we'll be up to 32 double crochets in row four. Two double crochet, double crochet into each of the next two. Two 
it's a little easier to see where your rows start and stop when you're using a taller stitch like the double crochet but it's still kind of nice to mark out something like the chain three that begins the row just so I'm a little more certain of where the actual top of the real stitch is and where the top of the actual chain three is that just sort of speeds things up for me when I get around to I have the end. a uh, public service announcement oh do you our website is now fully functional oh thanks sweetheart actually it's not fully functional there are some some images and pictures are missing but it's mostly functional maybe 90 percent yes and thank you to everybody who um sort of brought that to our attention last night we um we've had mister working on it for quite a while now. <laughs> almost completely back up and running uh, and don't worry there was nothing wrong with it it was just sort of a um, what do you call that sweetie a, a certificate thingy yeah it's like security certificate thingy just basically it happens all the time bunch of stuff needed to get it's refreshed not, nothing to yeah. concern yourself with you might see um, on your end you might see this website is not secure um, but it's not nothing to worry about. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Okay, I am back to the beginning. That was my last increase, two double crochet, double crochet, double crochet. That leaves me with the little false stitch right at the base of the chain three. So I'm going to double crochet into that. So I can skip the chain three. Take my little stitch marker out and join with a slip stitch. So that is row four complete. I'm up to 32 stitches now. I'm going to lay it down. Just use the heat of my hand to flatten it out a little bit. I like it nice and tight. It's good to be nice and tight. And it looks like I still need to do another row at least because I want that star to kind of stand out against the white. I think I got enough. Um, you're going to need about 80 yards. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. You're going to need 80 yards-ish in total for the whole project. Um, so if you're using a bunch of cotton scraps like me, you can break that down depending on how many colors you're using or um, how, many, um, how many rows you want to make it. Because uh, you can make this a little bigger if you want to. Actually, you can make it a lot bigger if you want to. Uh, but this one works out to be about 9 inches. Um, so if you wanted it to be larger, you would just do another row or two of continuing that increase pattern before we kind of round the bend, so to speak. That was row four. We're going to move to row five now. We're going to chain three to begin, double crochet into the same place. And now the new increase pattern is, uh, well, actually before I get to that, we're going to double crochet into each of the next three stitches. So double crochet into the same space or the same stitch as the chain three. Double crochet into each of the next three stitches. I'm going to just mark my chain three. And now we work two double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into each of the next mm -hmm. three stitches. And that's the repeat all the way around. And Nico, goodness gracious, Nico, gifting ninja, swoops in from the left with five gifted measurement me memberships. Thank you so much. We've got Jay Blue, Ivana, Carrie, Tammy, and Casper. Welcome to the family, all of you. Congratulations for winning. Two double crochet into the first stitch of the set, double crochet into each of the next three. We are continuing to increase. That gives us another eight. Uh, even increases all the way around. We'll be up to 40 double crochet stitches at the end of row five. Oh, I think I might have enough yarn here in this little scrap of white. We shall see. I like working circles. They're uh, kind of, kind of 
I want to say mesmerizing, but that's not the right word. They're um, meditative. They're kind of meditative. You sort of have to count. You want to pay attention to sort of where you are, especially if you're doing larger and larger increase patterns, like um, I'd say from like row five and onwards. But uh, I don't know. I kind of like watching it turn like a clock. Uh, public service announcement number two, Nico is, is accepting all hugs. I just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> all right, we've got one repeat left. That's two double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet in each of the next three stitches. And then now did I? One, two, three, four, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three. Aha! What did I just say about paying attention? You know what? I'm going to sneak it in. Okay, so here's something. If you've done what I've done, which is um, two double crochet and then worked an extra double crochet before you started your next repeat and you get all the way back around and you're like, wait a minute, um, just sneak it in at the end. So I'm going to sneak it in. I think I should probably have the right number. Let me just double check here. Two, four, two, four, six, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. Yep, yep, as long as you've got the right stitch count, doesn't matter, but I want to. Okay, so I did all the right increases. I just put one a little bit further away than a previous one. Doesn't matter. I've got <laughs> eight increases. <laughs> That's all that matters. So I'm going to double crochet into the base of the chain three. I'm still going to use that. Um, actually, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it in the same, the same stitch. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it in the same stitch that I put my last stitch because I delayed one of my increases. I'm still skipping over my chain three and I'm joining with a slip stitch to the top. So I don't want to take it all out. I don't have to take it all out. So long as I have 40 stitches all the way around, meaning I've done all eight of my increases, it's fine. So once I go back to the regular increase pattern for the next row, you're never even gonna notice that I made a mistake. So if you find you do the same thing, because it is hard sometimes to kind of keep track of what you're doing, uh, just count. Make sure that you have 40 stitches at the end of row five, however you get there. <laughs> um, I think, I think I'm going to do, I think, I think, think, think I might have enough left to make one more row of white. And then I think this is going to look really, really pretty. I'm kind of going for that crisp red and white before I go into my green. So I'm going to play yarn chicken. I'm going to use the rest of this white yarn up for row six. Row six, we're still increasing. Um, again, if you want to change colors, just fasten off, snip your yarn, fasten off, join your yarn with a slip stitch in the same stitch that you um, are sitting in right now. Uh, and chain three to begin the next row. So you can change colors at any time or not change colors at all. Row six begins with a chain three. We double crochet into the same stitch and then we double crochet into each of the next four stitches. And I'm gonna mark that first chain three. That just kind of keeps me uh, knowing where the end is <laughs> in case it gets, I, I'm, I'm starting to, uh, to get distracted here. And then the new increase pattern for row six is two double crochet into the first stitch of the set and a double crochet into each of the next four. And if I do this row exactly the way I'm supposed to, it will erase any of the funny little, um, errors that might have appeared in the previous row, which is basically just that I I, um, del I delayed where I put an increase. So it's not that big a deal, but some of us are perfectionists. So if you uh, are lazy and you don't want to take your work out, i.e. me, then um, just make sure you've got the right stitch count. Sneak, sneak a stitch in where you have to, if you have to. No shame in that. Oh, and I'm playing yarn chicken. Boy, I'm just doing all of the things today. I'm, I'm, 
showing how to how to fix a mess. I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm using up scraps and I'm playing your chicken. Oh my gosh, Lynette! Thank you, thank you so much, Lynette, with a very generous super chat. We've got some uh, some super supers in the in the chat with us today. Thank you guys. All right, I am halfway done. Row six. Lynette is cheering me on here with a super chat. I may not have enough. We will see. Here I go. I'm gonna home stretch of row six. Two double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into each of the next four. Can she do it? Sakura Sue with a purchase at the shop. Thank you, Sue. That reminds me, uh, we do have a pattern for today's little um, hot pad. It's in the shop. It's today's sneaky sale and it's up top. Um, I know a lot of you have it already because it was super popular uh, when we released it back in 2017. And if you haven't seen that original tutorial um, and you want to see it like, you know, the even changing of colors every two stitches, we've got that tutorial linked in the description box for you. And because I'm adding the little granny star, I will make sure that I've linked that in the description box for you uh, a little later on today. I didn't think of that uh, when we were setting up today's stream. I kind of just afterthought. I was like, oh, I want to use this little cotton star for something. I think I'd like it in the middle of the, the pot holder. So that is the plan. Holy cow, I might just do it. I think Yarn Chicken is going to win. I've got another surprise poll coming your way. Oh, okay. Are you freaking out? No, 47%. Yes, 23%, maybe a little. 21%, 6%. <laughs> I would like to take a moment to commend all of those of you who are not freaking out. Way to, way to be a boss, that's awesome. It is so easy to get, get, uh, get ourselves into a twist this time of year, a real cinnamon <laughs> twist, so to speak. Um, if any if anyone noticed some weird stuff going on, it's because my computer started shorting out after I was checking on our website. It was just too much; it couldn't handle it all. <laughs> but I don't know. It may it may have hiccuped on the live stream. It may not. I'm not sure. I will. Uh, so I we're will. Just, we're just all about public service announcements. We're just all about this PSAs is the third today. One today. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, okay, I've got my last increase in for row six. I made it, everybody. I had just enough to finish the row. I'm gonna double crochet into the false stitch. I am feeling pretty pleased with myself. I am going to skip the chain three. I'm gonna join with a slip stitch to the top of the first real double crochet, lay it down and flatten it out. Get that nice, heat going. Like I said, if it wants to bowl on you, just keep plating it down and flattening it out at the end of every row. It's better to be too tight than too loose when you're making something like a hot pad because it will flatten, it will spread. Uh, at the end of row six, we should have 48 double crochets all the way around. And that is enough for my star. I like it. I'm channeling a little, uh, if I had, a, if I go blue with the next row, I'd be kind of channeling Captain America, I think. It is a star in the middle of his shield, right? Or is that a blue star? I can't really remember. This is a Christmas star, though, <laughs> in bright red. So <laughs> that's going to go in the middle of my pot holder. I will attach that momentarily, but first, this is how we change colors. So... I'm gonna snip my yarn. Oh, is it a white star, Maria? I'm not gonna bother weaving that in. I'm just gonna work over top of it with my next color. I had very little white left, but I may use this still. 
for something on this project. So I'm just going to wind it up and get it out of the way. I think it's blue around with a white star, says Victor. Okay. Well, I knew I knew it was the red, white, and blue colors, and I knew there was a star in the middle. <laughs> I just couldn't remember what color. So a white star on blue. Yeah, I like this. This is going to be really pretty. Okay, I am now transitioning to green. So I'm going to get my green going here. And I'm going to work a couple rows in green. So I've just finished row six. You can count by finding your center, which was row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, row six. Always just sort of count up through the stitches in one direction. Row seven, we're going to go from 48 stitches up to 56. I'm going to start with a slip knot. And I'm going to join my yarn with a slip stitch in the same place that I fastened off. So you see, if you pull up on that little fasten off area, you sort of see where it lifts. That's where you want to put your hook and that's where you want to join your yarn. And I am going to work over top of both these little short tails. So slip stitch to join, chain three, and double crochet into the same place that you just joined your yarn and double crochet out of. And the increase pattern will be two double crochet into the first stitch, double crochet into each of the next five. We do not count the chain three. Um, we are going to double crochet in each of the next five stitches here before we do a proper first increase. And I'm going to mark that chain three with my stitch marker. So that's five. We're going to work two double crochet into the next stitch to start the second set. And then a double crochet into each of the next five stitches. So that's the little increase pattern all the way around for this row. And I'm going to just do one more stitch before I give myself some slack, pull back on that. There we go. Two double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into each of the next five stitches. Hello to all the lurkers. Thanks for spending some time with us. I know there's a lot of flying busy fingers out there this time of year. Two double crochet into the next stitch. Oh my goodness. Maria, thank you, Maria. Thank you for picking up a pattern. So two double crochet into the first stitch of the set, double crochet into each of the next five. I'm coming around the bend here. Slowly working my way up to 56 stitches at the end of this row. And then I've got one more repeat left, two double crochet, followed by five double crochet. Let 
and that puts me back to the false stitch. At the false stitch, we double crochet into it. So there's my false stitch. Looks like a real stitch. We're going to double crochet right into the top of it. And I'm going to reach over top of my chain three and join with a slip stitch to the first real double crochet. Lay it down. Now, here's the question. Do I go with another row of the green before I change colors again? Or do I change colors? Oh, this is going to be so cute. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I like this. I like this choice with the, the star in the center. Hehehe. <laughs> I've got one more row of increasing to do before I start to kind of turn, uh, work straight for a bit and then turn the corner. Um, so, more green? More green? What do you think, everybody? Should I go, should I continue with the green or change to, change maybe back to the red or change to the candy cane? I might do, gee whiz, you know, the whole back might end up being red. What if I do, um, Red, white, and green, obviously. Go over the edge, and then the whole back, I just kind of use up the rest of my red. Does that make sense? What do you guys think? <laughs> Least another green. Green, green, green. This is a very, um, this is a very, um, I want to say it's kind of like a... An Hold it close to the camera. It's usually easier to tell. The yeah, color. it's a it's it's not a very it's not a blue green. I feel like it's coming through looking a little bit blue, but it's really not. It's actually quite. Um, it's actually quite. What's the word I want to use? It's yeah. not a Grinchy green, and it's not an emerald or an evergreen. It's just, and it's not even a Kelly green. It's just kind of a. I don't know. <laughs> It's a green green. <laughs> it does look like a greeny blue through the yeah, screen. Yeah, it's it is green with a hint of blue in it. It um it does look blue on camera, but it's really not. It's actually yeah. quite quite green. But it all looks right, good though. I'm I, gonna do I another like row the, then. Uh, ring around the the star there. That looks great. Yeah, I like how this is looking. So yeah. I'm gonna teal. I'm gonna give myself that, that's that's the color. It looks like teal. Yeah, teal. It looks yeah. like teal. But it's it's jade. Jade. It's a, actually no, jade's still a little no, more No, jade isn't jade a darker green? Jade jade's a little more on the yellow side. Teal's a little more on the blue side. I would say this is closer to a to a Honestly, Can there is isn't... jam it right up to the camera. It's right in the middle. Hmm. I don't know. We'll see what they say in the chat. Yeah, I don't know. I'm uh, okay. I'm going into the vintage green. Yeah, that's a good word for it. Too, we're right? all leaning towards teal. I'm uh, I'm gonna go. Okay, so we're doing another row. This is our our eighth and final row of increasing. So I'll row eight. A row of that candy cane uh, yarn there. Well, I'd like that. I think I want to do just one bit thicker of green. I think I want a little oh, okay. bit. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. You know, like a thicker row of green. So all right, uh, chain three to begin row eight. Double crochet in the same stitch. And then it's a double crochet in each of the next six stitches before we do the row eight regular increase thing. So row eight is two double crochet into the first stitch, double crochet into each of the next six stitches. That's gonna be it for me for increasing. If you wanted to make yours even larger, in row nine, you could do the increase of two double crochet into the first stitch of the set, and then a double crochet into each of the next seven stitches and you repeat that all the way around. And if you wanted to go even bigger for row 10, two double crochet into the first stitch of the set, and then a double crochet into each of the next eight stitches, you can sort of see the pattern evolving, so you can keep making it bigger. However many rows of increase you do on the front though, when you come around the corner and start decreasing on the back, you have to do it in the same decrease. Um, you, have to, you have to do the same number of decreases, so um, in reverse, but we'll get to that. I'm just gonna make sure I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. seven and eight and then I will put my stitch marker on that first chain three so there's my chain three and two aha look at that so two double crochet double crochet into the next six one two three one two three so that means I'm starting again so two double crochet into the first stitch of the set double crochet into each of the next six stitches and that is our increase pattern for row eight. We are gonna go up to 64 stitches. That's the 
largest number of stitches in this particular pattern. But like I said, you can continue the increase pattern if you want yours even wider. Um, this will be about nine inches or so across. Two, six. I'm going to just quickly check in with the chat here while I sip some yarn. Um, Jada, what happened to the 1999 sparkle yarn? I used all of that crocus. That is all used up. I got it all finished. Bobby asked, did one skein each of the white, red, and green make the items in front of Jada? Oh, yes. Um, your I your average little um, skein of of cotton, at least here in Canada, comes in like a fifty gram ball, and I've got um, all of the things in front of me, with the exception of the sheep. I've been getting out of the same skein, so I've got this um, uh, this pot holder or dishcloth uh, has all come out of the same three skeins. So a, a green one, a white one, and a red one. I got this out of it. I've got a star and now I'm, I'm making this uh, double sided pot holder. Um, I think I've even got a couple other things that I've made. Um, so yeah, you can get several little items out of a sing out of those three balls of yarn together. They will make several little items. So that is definitely what's happening here. And where am I? One, two, three, and I'm coming up to the halfway point I think one more yeah one more two double crochet into the next stitch double crochet into each of the next six stitches and I think that puts me at the halfway mark around row eight One, two, and six. Good. And the second half of row eight. Once again, if you lay it flat and kind of keep laying, sort of laying your hands down on it, it will flatten for you. But if it wants to round out a little bit, that's okay. It just means that your tension is a little on the tight side and you want that because this is a, a hot pad and you want to air on your the side of your stitches being kind of tight rather than too loose. Hello, Lala. Lala has popped in with a membership milestone. Lala's been a member for 60 months. Thank you so much, Lala. Lala says, hello, y'all. I'm lurking while on for great granddaughter while well, working on the great granddaughter blanket thanks in stitches fam Ooh, a great granddaughter blanket that's amazing thank you for being here lola Another eight done. I've got a couple more repeats left here for row eight.
Here's the last set. Oh my gosh, Nico, Nico, thank you. Nico the Flying Gifting Ninja <laughs> zipped in again with another gifted membership. Thank you so much. And it looks like Teresa has won it. Welcome to the family, Teresa. I've got one more stitch to do in row eight. It is going to be into that false stitch at the base of the chain three. And then I will skip the chain three, join with a slip stitch to the top of the real double crochet. And that's it for increasing. So from here on out, it is just either straight double crochet or we start to turn the corner and decrease. And don't worry if it wants to borrow, sort of bow up on you because um, it's all going to get turned into a two-sided flattened thing. It And the tighter the stitches, the better. So don't worry too much about that. What I want to do though, before I go any further, is I want to pause and I want to stitch in my applique. So if you're going to be adding an applique, I, I thought maybe we would try kind of a neat way to, to join it today. You can sew them, of course, but I'm going to slip stitch mine. I'm going to use surface slip stitching because I think that's going to look really cool. And I think I might use the green yarn because it will it'll stand out around the edge. So either either the green or the white. What do you think I should do? Should I slip stitch? So I'm just going to lay the green over top of the white and then the white over top of the red. You guys let me know which you think I should slip stitch. It'll be surface chaining. So either the green on the red or the white on the red. I'm going to get some more water. I'll be right back, everybody. Okay, so what are we looking at? White on red, green, white. Kim says red, so Kim doesn't want to see the surface chaining. I've got, okay. a, I've got a poll running. We have about 85 votes right now. Okay. Kim, nothing's happened to the Grinch. <laughs> the Grinch. The Grinch may or may not happen, we don't know. Um, I've got to design that if we're going to do it and that's going to take me a little while. So um, you haven't missed anything. <laughs> I just haven't designed one yet. All right, well, let's get to 100 votes maybe in the pool. And is this for the green or the white, mister? Uh, yes, okay. between green and white and uh, 97 votes, 99. There we go. We hit 100. Okay. I'm also going to fasten off and change colors at this point. So I'm just going to do that while we look at the poll. Okay. And Here it comes. That's that. We still have a few more votes coming in. Oh, okay. The lurkers are all lunging towards the chat the box. The lurkers are lunging like now? Like Superman diving towards the chat box We've right now. We've got lunging lurkers. Lunging lurkers. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the that's the nickname, the lunging lurkers. 
I like it. We'll give them some time to lunge. <laughs> Lunging takes time. Um, in the meantime... You can't just lunge willy-nilly. I might go back to red. I might mix these two reds together. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. Or will I go with the peppermint? I might go with the peppermint to go around the corner. Okay, um, let's see that pool, mister. Here it comes. White or green? Green, 52%. White, 47%. Ah, pretty close. Okay, so green it is. All right, I'm going to use green then to do the surface chaining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the center of my star and I'm going to pair it up on top of the center of my hot pad so that the two centers are aligned and it's more or less in the middle. I've got kind of an even distribution of white all the way around it so that it's um, more or less centered. And then I'm going to hold it in place as opposed to um, pinning it. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to surface chain it down. So instead of sewing it down, I'm going to make a show of the actual uh, joining. I'm going to make a slip knot, but I'm not going to put it on my hook just yet. I'm going to reach through the top point space of the star to start right through to the back side of the um, so it's back here. My yarn's going to feed from the underside of the pot holder, and then I'm going to steadily keeping my center every couple of stitches. I'm going to pause. I'm going to go through the top of every single stitch all the way around with my hook and I'm going to surface chain. So let me get a few stitches in, making sure that it doesn't move on me. So even if I have to, and for the first few stitches, always just pause and put it back into place, I will do that. And making sure it hasn't moved. Okay, next one. So I'm actually working directly against the, like I'm keeping it pressed on the table while I push my hook through just so it doesn't move too much on me. Once I get a few stitches in, it will not like move around as much anymore. And this will get fixed by the end. Where's my little tail? There it is. Okay. All right, we'll come back and do that. So circle and then into this space. There we go. And then into the single crochet. Did it move? No. So I'm grabbing the yarn from behind. Get that little tail out of the way. And I'm pulling it back up so that I get this little surface chain all the way around. And I like this because you can attach it without sewing. So you don't need to cut a sewing tail and worry about running out of not having enough sewing tail. I'm gonna keep putting it back in place, making sure it's not moving. And then you get this kind of neat outline And let me get a few more stitches in here and I'll show you guys how it's looking. So, yeah, cool. It's gonna look like, um, it's gonna look like uh, old fashioned sewing, you know, like that, that old fashioned, you know, that little, um, uh, like when you use the little hand crank sewing machine, like that sewing machine toy, it's that running chain stitch. It's going to run all the way around. I think that's going to be so cute. Destiny! Thank you so much, Destiny. Destiny just swooped in a ninja herself and gifted a membership. It looks like Mary won it. Congratulations, Mary. So... 
So let's just get this peeled out of the way. Try not to be too tight with your chain stitch, but don't be too loose either. If you're gonna give this a try. You can also just like do the usual thing where you make a um, make an applique, leave a long tail, and then stitch it down like usual. Uh, that's perfectly acceptable too. So that's making sure this isn't moving. Mm -hmm. So that's got to go right there. That one is too high. There we go. And I'm going to keep pausing every so often just to make sure that I'm not pulling anything out of whack and that I haven't sort of skewed it too far to the left or right. Oh, that's cute. I like it. It looks a bit like a cookie. Mary! Oh my gosh, thank you, Mary! Mary! Another Gifting Ninja swoops in with a gifted membership and Starkable has won it. Congratulations! You're keeping Mr. Busy, Mr. Busy with the uh, the little animations today. I'm a busy beaver. He is a busy beaver. I like the green. Yeah, I think that was a good choice. Yeah. It looks. Are um, you gonna be doubling that up? How, yeah. How are you? So that it's thicker. Yeah. So this is what we're because I'm I'm pausing to put an applique in the middle front before we continue with the rest of the um, pot holder. I paused to stitch my applique on so that all of my stitching work is going to be on the inside. You won't see it. Okay. Yeah. So what you're saying is you're a crochet genius. <laughs> what I'm saying is I is that I I thought I would I would try adding an applique with a slightly different um, style style yeah i don't okay. usually stitch I like them it. on like this and i, I like thought it, it the experimenting i like it too i think mm -hmm, it, it's mm -hmm. cute it's got kind of a a cozy cottage kind of look to it with that surface chaining very nice and making sure that it's not moving yeah it's going to stay centered in the middle I like surface chaining. It it takes a little bit of getting used to, but I think it looks neat. It's one of my it's one of the easier embroidery stitches to do if you're into embroidery. Um, but it's kind of cool that we can get the same effect by crocheting too. So I'm just going through each individual stitch of the applique, and I'm punching my hook right through the fabric to the back, grabbing the yarn and pulling it back through again. So it's chaining, but it's surface chaining. And I don't think it's going to move much anymore now. Oh my goodness. Roseanne, thank you so much for picking up a pattern. Lala says you're the queen of crochet and a genius. <laughs> Thanks, Lala. Aww. Yeah, this is fun. So just to give you an idea, if you wanted to add an applique, if you wanted to, to try not sewing because I know a lot of you are like, eh, I don't like sewing. This works. This is really cute. It looks nice. If you want to put on an applique without um, without sewing and get kind of a neat little effect. So here I am back at the beginning. I'm going to go right back. I'm going to do my last um, my last slip stitch into the same place that I started. And now I'm going to pull up on that loop. 
I'm going to reach from behind now and grab that loop with my hook and pull it back down to the other side. And it's often good to just chain one extra on the back before you snip your yarn and fasten off. And then I'm going to take both of the tails, so the little start tail and the end tail, and I'm going to knot them together, and then I'm going to just weave them in quickly. Just so they don't want to come undone. And I'm going to just kind of slip them underneath some of the green, the backs of the green slip stitching I did. Nothing too fancy. This is going to be the inside of the pot holder, so they're not going to show. So it's, this can be a little messy back here. It doesn't really matter. There we go. All right. So here we are back, back to the pot holder. This is, this is great. Okay. So this gives it a little extra something in the center, a little extra protection, plus it's a cute little design. And I kind of like this little chained effect. It looks like a cookie. It looks like I decorated a cookie. Um, okay, we are going to continue with the pot holder now. So question, am I switching to this peppermint yarn to kind of go around the bend? Or am I going to go back to red? I have a little bit of green left. I may or may not use that. So red or peppermint, everybody? What am I switching to? I'm just going to rewind my green here. Feel free to shout out in the chat. Peppermint, peppermint. Yeah, it does have a sugar cookie vibe. Lala, thank you. Back to lurking and crocheting. Lala says, I shared this live. Thank you so much. Back to lurking and crocheting. Thank you for sharing it, Lala. And thank you for the super chat. <laughs> peppermint it is. Okay, overwhelmingly peppermint. Peppermint it is, everybody. Reds can sit to the back for a bit. Let's get into this ball of peppermint. Even Chibi Lula wants peppermint. Even Chibi Lula yeah. is in agreement. It is time for some peppermint. Yes, let's. Okay. So that was row eight that I completed. And row eight was the last row of increase. We now have row 10. Uh, I should say row nine and row 10. And we are just double crocheting in every stitch around. So 64 stitches at the end of row eight. Row 9 will have 64 stitches. Row 10 will have 64 stitches. So for row 9, we're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch. I'm going to put it in the same place that I fastened off. So right up here, I'm going to work over top of those two short tails. I'm going to join with a slip stitch and chain 3. And now we are still not counting the chain 3 as the double crochet. We are going to double crochet instead directly into the next stitch. So you've joined your yarn, just ignore it. We're going to um, double crochet into the next stitch beside the chain three, but we will be using the false stitch again at the end of the row. So we still aren't counting that, that chain three. double crochet into every single stitch all the way around. Oh my goodness, Tammy! Thank you, Tammy! Thank you for picking up a pattern. Here is a question from Targi or Targi. Sure. To make it safer slash tighter slash thicker, is there a, is it better to use thicker yarn or a thinner hook? Um, if you wanted to make it even thicker, so this is going to wrap in around on itself, so it will be double the thickness because we are going to wrap it around on itself. If you wanted it to be even thicker, because let's say the yarn you've got is kind of a thin, like maybe your cotton's a little on the thin side, you can double it up. So use two strands held together, that'll make it nice and thick, and then it'll be double the thickness again once you've sort of wrapped all the way around and worked the back half of the pot holder like we're starting to. Um, so that's one option. If you want tighter stitches because you tend to be a little on the loose side with your tension, use a bigger hook. 
Um, and if you find that your tension is just too tight, like if you're really struggling to, to kind of like finish a row and stuff, then you can go up a little hook size. So everybody's yarn is going to be a little bit different. Um, if you're using two strands together, you might find you've got to adjust your hook size. Um, but like I said, you want to err on the side of too tight rather than too loose. But even, you know, some things can end up being a little too tight. So feel free, if it's too tight, to go up like a half a hook size. Try that. Um, if it's too loose, go down a hook size. Um, or if you are worried about your yarn not being thick enough, feel free to double it up. Use two strands as you work the pattern. Good question. Crocus says, what kind of yarn would you use to cro surface crochet on blanket yarn? Oh, that's cute. Um, blanket yarn is typically 100% polyester, so you can really use whatever yarn you want on it. So if you're making appliques that are not also blanket yarn, so the blanket yarn serves as the basket background, and you're making appliques out of, say, acrylic or something, then you can just use the same yarn you used for... Uh, the applique, like the same fiber, let's say, because maybe you used a smaller hook and smaller yarn for the applique. If you used um, also blanket yarn to make the applique, you can use blanket yarn to surface crochet. It'll just be a super poofy version of this. Um, but you could also use a thinner yarn, like a size four weight, and um, maybe a bigger hook than you usually would. Like let's say you used a size eight millimeter, like an L11 hook with the blanket yarn. You could use a thinner weight, size four medium acrylic, let's say for the surface chaining, but use the same hook like the eight, just so you're not ending up chaining too tightly and you're not pinching your eight millimeter blanket crochet stitches together with a four weight yarn if you get my meaning so you can shrink the yarn and you can use any yarn you want on that polyester blanket yarn because it doesn't shrink um, but maybe stick to the same hook size that you use to make the blanket with mary uh, would like to know how do i buy a pattern uh we have an etsy shop um, the link to our etsy shop will probably be up top or in the description box for certain it's a blue it should be a blue bar at the bottom or the top of the chat um, and if you, you do not need an Etsy account, um, it's better but if you do have one, it though. is better if you do have but one, it doesn't cost you anything one. to have an Etsy account. Um, but it's, uh, you, you don't have to, but it, I, I recommend it just because it makes downloading your pattern a lot easier. Um, so you can set up an Etsy account or you could just, <laughs> speaking of Etsy, Simone, thank you. You can also just sort of purchase a pattern um, and fill out all of your information, kind of like any other, if you've done any sort of online shopping like Amazon or any of those other places, it's all kind of the same thing. Um, you know, you use a, a credit card, uh, you can use PayPal on Etsy. They actually accept just about everything, Apple Pay, um, just about everything. So you choose your payment type and you just fill out the information that they need um, if you don't already have an account or you're not setting up an account. And then you just kind of pick what you like, put it in your, um, your, your little shopping basket, they call it. And then you kind of check out just like you would if you were checking out from Amazon or something. Um, so very similar. Uh, I find most shopping online is kind of has the same sort of workflow to it. Wouldn't you say, mister? Yeah. Pretty much all digital things have the same workflow. Goodness, Sakura, thank you. <laughs> Miss um, Sue back in the house. We got a membership renewal from Renee. Big Renee. thank you to Renee. Welcome back, Renee. Thank you for coming back to the party and uh, welcome back to the family. Thank you, thank you. Re welcome to Renee. All right, I'm all the way around. Um, I'm going to make sure that I've got 64 stitches. So I've just worked a double crochet into every single stitch. I want to make sure I have 64 because 64 is the final stitch count at the end of row eight. At the end of row nine, I want to make sure I have 64, so I'm going to take a second and count them. Super sticker! So I do. I've got 64. 
I've worked my last double crochet into the chain or the false stitch and I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the real double crochet. And Renee, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for the super sticker. All right, that's row nine. I have 64 stitches all the way around. Everything is kind of bowing in on itself and that's exactly what should be happening because now we're kind of turning the corner. Remember, this is going to flatten. So don't worry too much if it's um, if it seems to want to bow earlier, it will flatten out uh, with use. So like I said, a little bit tighter is better than not. Um, row 10, we are going to repeat row 9, but before we do that, we're going to make a little hanger. So I like a little pot hanger or a pot holder that I can hang up on the wall. I think that's kind of cute, especially when they're they're kind of decorative like this. So at the end of row 9, after we've slip stitched into the top of the chain uh, three that's there, I'm going to create a little hanger. And it's really simple. I'm just going to chain 12. How about stuffing it with wool? That would make it thicker and safer. Yeah, you could put a whole other pot holder in here if you wanted to. Like you could crochet yes. another, another another round. Another um like you could crochet another round of, of eight rows and just put that inside it. Of course. Before you close it up. Oh um, that I like the the candy cane. That would have looked good on the front too. The Is it gonna show on the front or no? The peppermint? Yeah, it peppermint, will eventually. Sorry, yeah. yeah, a little bit's gonna show. I like it. After you chain twelve, you slip stitch into the same place. And then you pull the hanger to the front of your work. You want to make sure that it's sitting out the front. So once you've chained that, now this is optional, you don't have to add the hanger, but I like the hanger. Pull it to the front, and now we're going to continue with row 10. So we're going to chain three to begin row 10, and then we're going to double crochet in every single stitch all the way around. So just like we did for row 9, we're still going to have 64 stitches. Yeah, I like the peppermint too. I think the peppermint was a good choice. It's kind of a nice little uh, way to turn the corner. I might even just continue it all the way down the back. Like it doesn't, the back isn't going to show as much. So I might just continue with this color all the way down the back. I was more concerned about the front having kind of a, an interesting look to it. Susie gifting ninjas everywhere. Susie has swooshed in with a gifted membership. Thank you so much. And it looks like Deborah has won it. Congratulations, Deborah. Welcome to the family. Mr. and Stitches is, uh, has been working on getting our website back up and running. Uh, it suffered a little bit of a, <laughs> a bit of gas or something. Yeah, last night. I think it had some gas. <laughs> it too it's, has been overindulging. Um, so we, we put will it outside. Uh, we put it outside for the night. <laughs> we'll make sure that the website is uh, back up and running. Um, if anyone notices anything strange about the website, let let us know. Yeah. Um, but it should be back to normal. I'm gonna double check everything once our stream is over, and we shall see. Yeah. We shall see. So I am double crocheting in every single stitch all the way around. Oh my gosh, Lynette, also a gifting ninja. Goodness gracious, you guys, thank you so much. Lynette swoops in with a gifted membership and Ruth has won it. Congratulations, Ruth. Uh, we will post the membership login information for the Silk and Vicuña members again a little later today just to make sure that our website is back up and running properly first before we do that. Uh, if any of you are having trouble getting it to load, it's it might be because you were trying to get it to load earlier. Um, so what it's doing is it's it's taking from your history. You need to clear your cache 
your web browser, yes. clear your history and your cache, and then try again. So I'm doing two full rows of just straight double crochet in every stitch around. That gives me 64 stitches in every single row. I like this peppermint. I think I might just continue with the peppermint all the way through to the end. And uh, yeah. Okay, when you get back to the beginning, your um, chained ring, your little pot holder hanger, if you put one in, is kind of sitting right like at the top. It's at it's attached to the base of your chain three and the false stitch is right next to it. So what you wanna do is double crochet into the false stitch at the base of your hanger, pull the hanger to the front, to the right side of your um, your pot holder, and then you're going to reach across that chain three and join with a slip stitch to the top of the real double crochet, just like every other row we've been doing, because the chain threes don't count at the beginning. And then that makes sure, just before you continue, make sure that when you've got the right side of your pot holder showing, your hanger is on the right side, because we hanger's not going to do you any good if it's on the inside of your pot holder. <laughs> And yes, this is going to show, so I'm going to have a little bit of this peppermint showing all the way around the edge once this thing is completely finished. Um, it, the weight of whatever's sitting on it is going to flatten it a little bit, which is another reason I thought it might be kind of a neat idea to put like an extra applique in the middle here. Uh, so this is going to be really cute. I like this, the Christmas, Christmas take on our, our classic pot holder. I like it. Okay, so here we go. That's rows four and, or I should say rows nine and 10 done. They had 64 double crochet in each of them. We are now working to close in the back. So this is where the double-sided part of the pot holder comes into. Uh, we are going to now decrease in every row the exact opposite of how we increased in every row. So for row 11, we're gonna begin our increase, or I should say our decreasing. And it's the exact opposite of the last row of increase, which was two double crochet into the first set, double crochet into the next six stitches. So for row 11's decrease, it'll be double crochet the first two stitches together of the set and then double crochet into the next six stitches. So here we go. We're gonna chain three. The chain three does not count as anything. So we are going to double crochet into the base of the chain three. So the same place we just chained three out of, we're gonna double crochet right into that. We're gonna start a double crochet stitch, work the first half of it, and then start a double crochet stitch in the stitch next to it, work the first half of that. That gives us three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull back through everything. So that's a double crochet, two stitches together. And remember your chain three doesn't count, but I'll make it'll make more sense when we get back around to it. Double crochet in each of the next six stitches, and then I'll show you that double crochet two stitches together once more. So that's a double crochet in each of the next six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now we double crochet two stitches together. So you start a double crochet in the next stitch, work the first half, start a double crochet in the stitch next to that, work the next or the first half. That gives you two half worked double crochet stitches and your working loop. So you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull back through everything. And that creates a single stitch up top. There's the single stitch, but you've got two kind of collapsed together underneath it. And a double crochet into each of the next six stitches. And we repeat that all the way around. Nico, holy cow. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Nico's just gifted 10 memberships. Thank you so much. My gosh. Is there anybody left in the chat who isn't a member at this point? <laughs> this is so great. Thank you guys so much. Holy cow. Welcome Dolores, blatantly Billy, 
Becky, Sandra, Sandra, Reds, Robin, Melissa, Laws, Maria, and that's everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Nico, and welcome, and welcome back to everybody who just won a membership. You guys are so sweet. I think Nico the Ninja is wearing a ninja suit and a Santa Claus suit today. It's a Santa Ninja suit. It's a Santa Ninja. Throws cookies instead of ninja stars. Oh, I like that. So double crochet, two stitches together. And double crochet into each of the next six stitches. I like this side of the pot holder because every row gets quicker and quicker and quicker because each row is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> Double crochet two together. And double crochet into each of the next six. Double crochet two together, double crochet into each of the next six. I think I have one more decrease repeat left, and that will be row 11 all wrapped up. And like I said, we've got an original tutorial for how to build this basic pot holder, and we've got it linked in the description box down below. Today we are making it very festive, so we've added a, a bright, happy star to the front. We practiced some surface chaining um, and uh, we've sort of switched up where and how often we change colors. So the original tutorial shows you much more regularly how you can change colors every two rows, but you can do the whole thing using a single color if you want. You don't have to change colors. Um, you can also make your stripes a lot wider. You can leave off the applique in the middle or add it. I think the added applique is kind of a nifty idea. Not only does it look kind of cute, um, and really makes it a unique looking pot holder, but it gives it a little extra something uh, of protection between the pot and the surface that it's sitting on. And I think I've got one more decrease repeat left to go. There it is there. Yep, one more decrease. So double crochet, two stitches together. And double crochet into the last eight stitches. And double crochet into the false stitch. So it still sits at the bottom of that chain three. It might be getting smaller now that we're decreasing. Skip the chain three and join with a slip stitch in the top of the first double crochet two stitches together. So there we go. That's the first row of decrease. And this is going to lay nice and flat when it's done. All right, that was row 11. Uh, that was the first row of decrease. We're down to 56 stitches now all the way around. And we're going to continue decreasing from there. So now we are moving on to row 12. Same thing, we're going to chain three to begin. The chain three does not count as anything. Into the same place, we're going to start a double crochet two stitches together. So you double crochet the first two stitches of the row together. And then we're going to double crochet into each of the next five stitches. So six from the previous row, five now in this row. Double crochet two stitches together, double crochet into each of the next five stitches.
and things are speeding up. Double crochet two stitches together. And double crochet into each of the next five. And so on, all the way around. I find now that I've got my little um, hanger here, it's kind of a nice indicator. I know where the start and stop of the row is. Double crochet, two stitches together, and double crochet into the next five. Thank you for picking up a couple of patterns. I'm halfway done row 12 now. Double crochet two stitches together, double crochet into each of the next five. So I'm still making things smaller and smaller and smaller here. And I think I've got maybe one or two decreases left, maybe one. Double crochet, two stitches together, and double crochet into the last five stitches. And then we double crochet into the false stitch, skip the chain three, and find the double crochet two stitches together that began the row, slip stitch to join. So at the end of row 12, we are down to 48 stitches all the way around and we are still shrinking. This is, uh, I really like that. That's really cute. I'm gonna have a sip of water. Are we talking about cookies? <laughs> are you eating cookies? We are constantly talking about snacks here in the chat. Country Darlin, speaking of sweet cookies and and uh, and uh, niceness, we've got Country Darlin with a super chat. Thank you so much, Country. Jada, have you been? You've been so kind to do all these live videos. Thank you. Well, thank you guys. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. You guys are so much fun. You're so creative. You're so supportive. We've really been enjoying this too. It's a nice way to kind of count down to the holidays with everybody. It's nice to have some company and uh, honestly, it's a great way to get some things made in time and I won't feel quite so pressed. I've got, um, I've got a, I was making all of these things thinking they might be for me, but I'm now thinking this might be a really cute set um, as a hostess gift. I just, I've got my little soap saver, I've got my little dishcloth and now I've got like a little matching hot pad. I don't know, I like it. I think it's really cute. Great way to get stuff done. All right, we are rolling into row 13. I'm going to chain three to begin. I'm gonna work a double crochet two stitches together into the same stitch. So I'm starting it in the same stitch that I chained three out of, and I'm finishing it in the stitch next to that. And then I'm gonna double crochet into each of the next four stitches.
And the decrease pattern for row 13 is double crochet, two stitches together. And double crochet into each of the next four. And the rows are getting quicker and quicker because they are getting smaller and smaller. Yeah, that would have been a cute beret, I agree. <laughs> Great, Joanna. I got halfway through it and I'm like, oh gosh, that would have been a cute beret. Hmm. <laughs> would have to be a little bit bigger though. Uh, you might, might need to, to go out to like 10 or 11 uh, inches in diameter. Now I might have to make myself a bray that has a great big star on the side. <laughs> Ugh, darn this creativity, it just doesn't stop. Makes me want to, uh, I, if, I, if I need like three extra pairs of hands, maybe like two other brains, one to sort of deal with most everyday stuff and the other two to kind of constantly like work on patterns. <laughs> Thank you, Louise. I think I've got one more decrease left after this for row 13. And at the end of row 13, we'll be down to 40 stitches. So just 40 stitches all the way around. There we go. And double crochet into the false stitch. And join with a slip stitch to the top of the Double crochet two together that began the row. Getting much, much smaller here. I like to just sort of pull it out a little bit, remembering that tightness is okay because it will lay nice and flat, especially when you start using it. Um, gee, I really like this. This is, this is coming together really nicely. <sighs> do I give it away or do I keep it? <laughs> hmm. The ever dilemma of the crochet. Oh, I like this. Should I keep it? <laughs> Let's make that one a little tighter. We are starting uh, row 14. So we've got 40 stitches at the end of row 13. We are starting row 14 now, and we are going to shrink ever further down to 32 stitches. Chain three to begin. Start a double crochet two together in the same place as the chain three and double crochet those two stitches together, the chain three will not count. Double crochet into each of the next three stitches. So double crochet, two stitches together. Double crochet into each of the next three. And it goes quicker and quicker and quicker. Tammy, the false stitch is uh, something that you get when you work in the round and you join a row with a slip stitch. So whether you're working circular or square, it doesn't matter the shape. If you're always stitching in the same direction and you get back to the beginning and you join that row with a slip stitch to the top of the first chains or the first stitch of the row, at the base of your chain three, you get this little guy. It's the slip stitch and it's not technically a stitch. You can use it 
in the case where you are maybe working circular and you don't want a gap showing, um, you can use it to kind of hide seams, but you aren't supposed to count it as a regular stitch count. So for example, if you work 12 double crochet into a circle and join with a slip stitch and then count the tops of all your stitches, you'll have 12, but you'll have this little extra slip stitch and that's the join. And when you are working in the round and your stitches are kind of loosening up, it's very easy to confuse that stitch with a reg regular stitch and it confuses us all the time. We're like, oh my gosh, I thought I counted 12 stitches. Why do I have 13 showing? It's, it's that join. The join actually creates its own little stitch. Um, so we use it sometimes and other times we skip it, but that's how you get a false stitch. It's, it shows up when you join a row when you're working in the round. And two double crochet together. So double crochet, two stitches together, double crochet into the next three. I am still decreasing. This is row 14 that I'm on. my last decrease, double crochet into the last three stitches, double crochet into the false stitch, and join with a slip stitch to the top of the double crochet two together that began the row. Get nice and small, I'm gonna lay it down, just spread it out a little bit, every single row. There we go. That was row 15. We are down to 24 stitches. I'm sorry, that was 14. We're down to 32 stitches all the way around. Moving on to row 15, where we work double crochet two stitches together, double crochet into each of the next two stitches, and then we'll be down to 24. So start with chain three, double crochet the first two stitches of the row together, double crochet into each of the next two stitches, and repeat. Double crochet, two stitches together. Double crochet into the next two stitches. And repeat. not to split my yarn. There we go. Just finishing off row 15 here, getting down to the last few stitches. What did I do there? So 
double crocheting into the last two stitches, double crocheting into the last stitch, the last out of the false stitch, joining to complete the row. I am now down to 24 stitches all the way around. Row 16, ever, ever smaller. Chain three to begin, double crochet the first two stitches of the row together, double crochet into the next stitch, and repeat. Double crochet two stitches together, double crochet into the next stitch. I feel like I can hear Mr. and Stitches snickering, but I'm not sure why. <laughs> I'm glad I just went with peppermint for the back of this. I think it's cute. Nice and fresh. I can flip it over if I want a peppermint looking hot pad, or I can have the star showing on the front. Oops, didn't mean to do two, just one. Double crochet two stitches together, double crochet into the last stitch, double crochet into the false stitch, and join with a slip stitch to the top of the double crochet two together that joined the row. All right. Ever smaller, ever smaller. That was row 16. I am down to 16 stitches all the way around. So for row 17, I am now double crocheting two stitches together all the way around. So I'm um, not doing any, I'm just, it's basically just a row of decrease. So I'm gonna chain three to begin. I'm gonna double crochet the first two stitches of the row together. And then that's all I'm gonna do all the way around. So double crochet two stitches together. Double crochet two stitches together. I do this eight times all the way around. I'll be down to eight stitches. Things are getting nice and small now. That's so pretty. On the other side, you could use either side. Yeah, yeah. Depending was, on your mood. I was thinking the same thing. I wanna, if I want a peppermint one, I can use the yeah. peppermint side. And if I want to- Genius. If I want to, to see the star, then uh, I just show the other side. I like it, I like it. Double crocheting my last two stitches together. And I'm gonna join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three, or not the chain three, the uh, other double crochet two stitches together that started the row. So now I've got this. I've got this tiny itty bitty little, little hole left. And I'm just gonna single crochet all the way around. So I'm gonna single crochet in each stitch all the way around, just to kind of finish things off. I'm gonna chain one to start. I'm gonna single crochet in the same place that I chained one out of. And I'm gonna single crochet into each of these stitches. This is just gonna fill in that circle just enough that I won't have like a little bit of a gap. And then we're gonna cinch it up with a, a drawstring. So we're just single crocheting each of those stitches. There'll be eight of them. Slip stitch to the top of the first slip single crochet to join that row and then leave like, I don't know, 15 centimeters, maybe six inches, not a lot of tail. And then we're gonna weave it through each of the stitches of row eight. So in and out, in one stitch and out the next in one stitch, out the next. All the way around. And then we're just gonna cinch it up. Kind of like a little balloon. Cinch it up so there's no space there. 
you can sort of run your tail around it a few more times if you want just to kind of make sure that it doesn't want to come undone and then I'm gonna make a little knot just a tiny little knot just one single sing, single simple knot and then I'm going to weave the tail in a few more times. And if I've got a lot of excess, I'll just trim it all off. Nico, Nico, <laughs> Nico, gifting another membership. Thank you so much, Nico. Cindy has won it. Congratulations, Cindy. <laughs> weaving my tail in underneath some of these stitches back here. I'm going to go first one way and then I'm going to sort of reverse course and go the other way. And I'm being careful not to pull too tightly because I don't want to pull it out of alignment. And I'm going to flatten everything here in a second. So I'm going to go back in the other direction now. Just making sure that that's woven in at least three times going back and forth and back and forth. So I know it won't come out. And I can trim whatever's left. There we go. Now let's flatten it. So we just gently pull it out. So this is the back and let's measure it. How wide did it wind up being? I think it's usually around nine inches, but yep, nine inches on the nose. How do you like that? 23 centimeters. So that is the back and I think, gosh, that is just about as pretty as it could be using a variegated yarn. I mean, that's a perfectly nice little pot holder, but uh, here's the front and we've got a little hanger to boot. Ah, I love it. Connie, Connie with a membership milestone. Connie's been a member for 58 months. Thank you, Connie. Connie says, Merry Christmas to all and Happy New Year too. And I highly second that. <laughs> Thank you, Connie. Well, there we go. A double strand or a double sided pot holder. The whole thing is made in one go, so you've got a nice double thickness. You don't have to do any sewing. If you want to add a an applique like I've done here, you can sew it down, of course, but I opted to surface, surface stitch it in, so surface chaining. I like it. It's got kind of like a little decorated cookie kind of look to it. It was a nice way to use up um, some of my scraps. I still have some white and green cotton yarn, uh, along with quite a bit of that peppermint and some red. So my little collection of Christmassy cotton goodies is uh, growing. I've got the pot holder or the dishcloth. I'm not sure which I'm going to use for that. My little soap saver scrubby and now the real hot pad. Um, and that extra bit of, of um, padding that the applique gives is uh, makes it pretty thick. I like that. feels good. I'm not afraid to put a pot on that. Recommend cotton. For these projects because they're heat resistant, they're cold resistant, and they absorb water and they wash well. And we have a regular tutorial for the pot holder. It's linked below. I will also make sure that our little granny star is linked there as well because I really like the way that wound up looking. I think that's really cute. And of course I can hang it because it's got a little hanger. Um, We've got a large membership gifting. Oh my gosh, from... Connie! I think it was Connie. 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 Connie, goodness gracious, thank you so much. Connie has gifted five memberships, holy smokes. Welcome and welcome back to Anna Victoria. Uh, Te Tequira, wow, that's cool. Tequira, Texas Life, Debbie and Diane. I hope I got everybody's name correct there. Welcome and welcome back. Thank you so much, Connie. And uh, we will make sure that our website is up and running properly. And I will, as soon as we know that it's all functional again, we will post the um, Silk and Vicuña membership information. 
Um, for logins, since we've got all these new and returning members, um, we've recently updated that information. And since we've been kind of overhauling the website today, <laughs> we'll make sure it's all up and running. We'll repost that information again later today. And um, we will post it uh, to the free pattern page too for everybody. We'll make sure there's a link for that in today's uh, post uh, this afternoon. So if you haven't had a chance to check out our website in a while, be sure to do that. We've got all sorts of great pages there. We've got a tools page, we've got some free patterns. Uh, we've got all sorts of nifty things over on that website. Um, it's kind of like a collection of resources that sort of backs up the YouTube channel. So um, if you've never checked it out or if you haven't checked it out in a while, make sure you do that. We've got a new member, Christian. Goodness. Big welcome. Welcome, Christian. Welcome to the family and Joanne. <laughs> Joanna's Craft Animal Arc has also gifted a membership. Holy cow, thank you so much. And welcome to Autumn. Autumn has won it. <laughs> Goodness gracious, you guys. What a fantastically massive family we have here. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, happy holidays and Merry Christmas to everybody. And if you're a brand new member, like I said, we're going to make sure we've got some membership information in the community tab of the channel um, a little later on today. So uh, we'll make sure our web page is up and running smoothly. In the meantime, um, if you want to check out the original tutorial, it's linked below. I will also include the link to our star because I think this worked out really, really cute. I like this for, for Christmas. And I'm just thinking if you did this in red, white, and blue, this would look really great for um, uh, um, Independence Day in, Ju in July. And I'm thinking I've got a red Maple leaf. I've got a maple leaf applique that's about the same size, so I could do this in red and white with the maple leaf applique for uh, for Canada Day in July as well. That, that's um. I'm getting uh, visions of Captain America shield. Yeah, a little bit. It I needs like a it. little tiny white star in the middle. Yeah, white star in the middle, and then blue tiny and, one. <laughs> blue and white. I like that. It. That looks really good. I love the way the edge worked out with that little bit of uh, peppermint there. Yeah, I think it worked out. And then Very of course, if I just nice. want to hide the star this actually i could flip this over and this looks really nice that for the summer too. i like it too two-sided can there we you go. see the edge can you show the edge up close so what is that about a centimeter and a half of thickness thickness um i yes. guess it depends on it's about a centimeter about a centimeter about a centimeter and a half but then of course if you add the extra applique to the center it's pretty thick um, some people would like to know what the uh, peppermint yarn is if they want to find it. It is, oh, let me see. It's a Burnat, Burnat Handicrafter. Hang on, let me see if I can find the uh, Burnat Handicrafter. The colorway is, uh, wow, Azalea Ombre. Azalea, A-Z-A-L-E-A, -A -A. Azalea Ombre. That is a quite a name. That's quite a name. Yeah, it should be peppermint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this it looks is like peppermint. Azalea Ombre. It's a Burnett Handicrafter. Um, I'm gonna that's, guess that's a big ball. Yeah, it's a big ball. Yeah. I'm gonna guess there's probably a version of it uh, made by Sugar and Cream. I think Sugar and Cream is the other name. A lot of this stuff gets sold under. Um, so yeah, there you go. Azalea Ombre. That's this colorway. And I think it works nicely as a peppermint. Um, okay, everyone. I think we will call it there today. Um, I can't believe it's Wednesday already. Mr. and Stitches, did you have anything you wanted to add? I felt like... Uh... No, I think you've covered it all and then some. I, I love... I like, I'm like. i liking the um, bundle on the screen Yeah, there. I like this looks, too. Looks good. You know what, everybody? I'll post a little um, post about this later this afternoon. So if you want to find all these, uh, the live crochet alongs or the tutorials, in some cases we've got tutorials, we'll make sure those are all kind of put together in a single package. So if you're thinking about a little like happy hostess gift or something. I like this. I'll um, I'll put this together into a post for you later and we'll have all the links kind of combined into a single one because I feel like this is a nice little Christmassy, Christmassy um, collection. Maybe, maybe also with my little, my little silly. <laughs> I love this. This is just ridiculous. This little thing. <laughs> a little goofy sheep is awesome. Our little goofy sheep. Everyone loves the little goofy sheep. I think I think we'll do the goofy sh sheep tomorrow. I think this that would be you fun. You want to want to do another live tomorrow? Yeah, I think we'll live stream tomorrow, same okay. time, same bat channel, everybody, and, and we're just do the little goofy sheep. If you want to join us tomorrow, we'll make this little guy. It might be a shorter uh, live stream than normal. We'll make a couple of them, but if you want to be ready to go 
Uh, I've got some some wooden beads here. I'm using as his little little kind of feet to give him a little bit of weight as he falls. So these are wooden beads. Um, they're not very big. They're probably like a two millimeter bead, but you can use any bead with a large hole in it because I'm using that thick size six bulky weight blanket yarn. Um, so if you want to put little feet on the bottom, like beads or pom-poms so just you know raid the craft stash um, you can you want to have something kind of dangling on his little feet I've got a little ribbon here and this is probably like four yards of that blanket yarn and then another couple yards of just regular yarn um, size four weight I've mixed it this is an acrylic this is a polyester but you can use probably any size six you want so it's nice fluffy fluffy yarn if you don't have a size six bulky weight you can hold multiple strands of uh, size four together, uh, but we'll talk more about that tomorrow. So if you want to be ready to go That's I think what we'll do tomorrow because that's just silly and if you've got friends that crochet or knit or loom or do anything That's kind of like yarny. I feel like this would be just the cutest little mini gift present topper or something like that for them um, So yeah, we'll do that tomorrow Okay, everybody <laughs> Have a wonderful afternoon. Keep an eye on our community tab. We will have some posts for you all, including our new members. And uh, we will see you tomorrow.